So we just arrived to explore and document this abandoned jail, but we just realized that it might not actually be 100% abandoned. Although large sections of the jail are indeed abandoned, we just watched several police officers walk into the same exact building that we are about to go explore. Here you see one of the uh, jail keys still in the door. That's pretty cool to see. And as you look down the hall, you see there's stuff just all scattered about, almost like they're still working in here. There's some flickering lights going on over here, making it pretty creepy. But these are actually holding cells, these two cells here. You can see the long extended bench so they can house multiple inmates uh, when they first come in. So this is the former visitation area and you can see through the window there's little stools set up so the inmates can visit their loved ones and vice versa. Okay, so we're going to leave the first floor booking area and go upstairs to the jail dorms where the inmates were actually held. So this abandoned jail was originally built in the 1950s as a motel because this area was thriving at that time with uh, other small businesses, venues, and retail stores. But by the 80s, this neighborhood really started to decline with guns, drugs, prostitution, and other crimes. So the sheriff office bought the motel and actually renovated the motel into the jail that you see here now. The jail was originally designed to house women, inmates, and offenders. By the 2000s, the jail also started to house juvenile offenders that were convicted of felony and misdemeanors. Some inmates were also held as they waited transfer to a prison to serve long-term sentencing. So this dorm here has a unique layout and design where we have bunk beds on each side and then you have a TV where everyone would watch and probably fight over what to watch. And this obviously over here is the shower area. You can only imagine what went on there. And we take a look back at the uh, bunk beds in the dorm here. Okay, so approximately 20 years ago, the jail really began to experience major issues and irreversible damage when a huge storm wrecked havoc in the area and even flooded large portions of the jail itself. There have been many tragic accounts documented of what exactly happened in the jail during that huge storm and the consequential flooding that followed. Many inmates even went on record to talk about the deplorable conditions of the jail after the storm, where they had no food, water, or fresh air during that time. Here we see a close-up view of some of the food trays that were left behind. And some of the food trays still have food inside them. You can see that this style of dorm is a bit different from the other one with the bunk beds. This dorm actually has jail cells on each of the walls and they all surround the eating area and seating area in the middle of it. This is inside one of the uh, guard booths and you can see that they had monitors so they could watch the CCTV inside the dorms. In this cell, there's actually a kitchen jumpsuit for one of the inmates that worked in the kitchen. And with this pan here, you can kind of see the layout of how this jail dorm looks and how it's different from the other one. Here's some playing cards that the inmates used to help pass time still sitting on the table. Here's some various photographs that we were able to capture from inside this particular dorm inside the abandoned jail.
And as you can imagine, the inmates had quite a bit of time on their hands. So as you can see, they obviously drew and carved on the walls inside their cells. And that's exactly what you see here with all sorts of various pictures and writings uh, in each of these cells. As we take a closer look at some of the inmate drawings and carvings inside their cells, it'll give us a chance to actually talk about some of the reports that inmates made about the jail during the storm. Some of the reports were inmates had to drink contaminated water from leftover showers and also from toilets because there was no fresh water due to the storm. Another report was due to the storm, the jail had no electricity or power, so the jail cells became pitch black and then the toilets began to overflow. So there was this toxic and foul odor that permeated through the entire jail. There was also reports of inmates having seizures and even fainting because they were not able to access their medications. Now we're gonna creep all the way up to the top floor to check out the final area of the jail. So it looks like this jail dorm was very similar to the first one with all the bunk beds lined up on each side, except for this one, it looks like the bunk beds were actually taken out at some point. Although the jail did operate for a few years after the catastrophic storm, it was pretty much the final nail in the coffin as it just suffered way too much structural and electrical damage that it eventually had to be closed. And that should wrap it up for the Abandoned Jail, friends. Hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget, subscribe to Abandoned Central to get all of our latest videos. Thank you all so much.